Over the last several weeks, we have been studying through the Sermon on the Mount, and this week we're going to conclude that series. Our text today is in Matthew chapter 7, and we will begin in verse 13. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those that enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes, or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. And not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. And when Jesus finished these sayings, the crowds were astonished at his teaching. For he was teaching them as one who had authority, and not as their scribes. So Jesus concludes the Sermon on the Mount with a difficult teaching. Right? It's, it's not difficult because it's hard to understand. It's, it's not hard to understand. Today's reading is a pretty easy reading in terms of understanding what Jesus means, what he is saying. It's a difficult teaching because it's hard to accept. Jesus has spent the whole Sermon on the Mount pointing out the way to life, the way into the kingdom of heaven. He's been doing that through the entire sermon, and now he concludes the Sermon on the Mount by telling us, Almost nobody is going to go that way. Almost no one is going to get on the narrow, difficult path that leads into the kingdom of heaven and go the distance. He says, instead, most people, most people are down on the beach building their houses on the sand and just waiting for the next storm to come in. All right, it, that's a difficult thing to hear that the vast majority of people will not enter into this life that Jesus has just spent the whole time talking about. And part of that is because this life that Jesus has been teaching us about is difficult. It's hard and it rubs against our grain. All right? We don't want to hear, blessed are the poor in spirit. Right? It looks great on a pillow, but it doesn't look so great on me. I don't want to be poor in spirit. Right? I don't want to mourn. I don't want to be meek. Right? The message of the kingdom of heaven is difficult. And frankly, in a lot of places, unattractive to people. And so Jesus says... Most people just aren't going to go that way. Most people are going to go the other way. The gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. Those that enter by it are many. Now, there's almost nobody building their house on the rock where it is going to stand. 
The reason for that is that not everybody wants to acknowledge, to accept the authority of Jesus Christ. Because that's what all of this ultimately boils down to. It's a major theme of this part of the lesson. In fact, Matthew's description of the whole sermon finishes with these words. When Jesus finished these sayings, the crowds were astonished at his teaching because he was teaching them as one who had authority, not as their scribes. Jesus is presenting his authority here. He depicts himself as being the arbiter, the final judge at the end of the age. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, etc.? Then I will declare to them, the Lord says, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. He presents himself in that role of authority. He says the difference between the people who take the easy road and the people who take the difficult road, the people who build their house on the sand versus the people who build their house on the rock, ultimately boils down to his words. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a man who built his house on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like the foolish man who built his house on the sand. That's the dividing line is whether or not you listen to Jesus' words. And this is a dividing line that cuts through everybody and everything. Not just believer versus unbeliever. That's not the division that Jesus is laying out here. The question is, are we listening to Jesus' words and doing them? Because Jesus warns us, that there are even going to be lots of people who claim him, who call out his name, who acknowledge him as Lord even, who are going to be the, the people building their houses down on the beach, going down the easy and wide road. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Notice, in this, in this vision of that day, Jesus presents to us people who call on the name of the Lord and are doing things, at least they think, to the Lord's glory. All right, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not do many mighty works in your name? Ultimately, though, that's, that's not the question. Jesus is not confronting us with, well, did you prophesy or not? Or did you cast out demons or not? Or did you do all these mighty works or not? He's confronting us with this question. Did you do the will of the Heavenly Father or not? Are you doing the things that Jesus talks about in the Sermon on the Mount? Or not. That's the dividing line. Right? It is easy to slap the Lord's name on just about anything you please and say, I'm doing this to glorify the Lord Jesus. Super, super easy to do that. But that is not the criterion that the Lord is looking at. Jesus is looking at, did you do the will of the Father? Have you heard these words and done them? And that is why he warns us, always be looking out for the fruits of things. Beware of false prophets, those who come in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Because you'll recognize them by their fruits. And it's a warning for us as well, that we should discern our own fruits. Right, a healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Again, that's the dividing line here. What fruit are we bearing? Are we bearing fruit in keeping with the kingdom? Are we doing these things that Jesus has been teaching us about or not? 
At the end of the Sermon on the Mount, that's the only question. Now that you have heard the Sermon on the Mount, will you do it or not? It doesn't matter much whether you say you're going to do it. It doesn't matter much whether you say that you're going to claim Jesus as Lord if you don't keep what Jesus says. Now, this shouldn't necessarily be a cause for panic for us, but it certainly should be a cause for alarm, for diligence, discernment. It is a call to not become complacent in our own place in the kingdom. To not assume, well, hey, I'm wearing the right name, therefore I must be on the right path. But to constantly be discerning, which way am I on? Am I on that narrow path? Am I building my house on the rock? Am I bearing good fruit? Am I doing the will of my heavenly Father? The gospel presents us good news. Because we're all going to fall short in this. And going the distance down this narrow road by ourselves, just on our own steam, is impossible. The good news is that Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God, came in the flesh, lived among us, lived a perfect life, died on behalf of us to forgive us of our sins. And because of that, we can have hope that we can make it down this narrow road, that we can enter into the kingdom of heaven. And so long as we are on that road, we must constantly have on our lips that prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. The call today is to obey the words of Jesus Christ. If you're not a follower of Jesus Christ, we invite you to follow him, become his disciple. Believe in that good news that Jesus is the Son of God. Turn away from the life of sin. Get off of that broad path and onto the narrow path. Quit building your house down on the beach and build your house on the rock. Start bearing good fruit. Confess Jesus is Lord. Be baptized into his death, burial, and resurrection for the remission of your sins. If you're subject to the invitation, won't you come as together we stand and sing?